I've always felt different. I've always seen things, but when I tried to express them as a child, I was always told to ignore it. There were people that I didn't know that came to me and said, I have this message that I keep getting that I have to deliver to you. All of a sudden, out of the shadows, a homeless man just jumped right in front of me, and he said, I'm a soul just like you. I love it. I wanted to understand the universe and who and what we are and what are we doing here. And we're all here. part of this amazing yes, soul way of tapping into each other. This was a major life changer. You are a light. You have helped me a ton. Thank you. You have given me the courage to live more from my soul. Millions of people are awakening. So wake up with Michelle Miche. Be pleased to hear the best-selling authors and experts in the fields of cutting-edge self-help, personal growth, metaphysics, and spirituality. The soul path of awakening. Understand what living awake is. Hello, Radiant Lights. Welcome to Awakenings. If you're new, glad you found us. Always great to connect with new people on the path of awakening, ascension, and just basically living more fulfilled and more conscious and happier. How's that go? And my tried and trues, um, great to connect with all of you. Those of you that have subscribed to the show, thank you so much for being here. Um, And those in the chat that help ground the energy as well. Got a great program for you, Uh, but first, just a little bit of stuff, a little biz. Um, If you are on the phone lines and you want want a reading or you have a question or a comment, please press 1 on your keypad. Otherwise... um, yeah, otherwise I just I won't you won't show up in as um you'll be in the queue but not as to get a reading. And if you're kind of curious about that, that number is 347-539-5122. 347-539-5122. Okay, got my sound engineers, those that anchor the energy in the chat, let me know how sound is. Great to see all of you. Um here so yeah so i have um a couple announcements guest suggestions topic suggestions all things awakenings please um email me at awakeningspodcast at gmail dot com and also i've had some dms in my um uh in instagram asking about workshops or readings or things like that, the best thing to do is just email awakeningspodcast at gmail.com and just say you want to get on the list, you know, you want to keep, get into the happenings. You can also go to soulplayground.life, and I think a little pop-up comes up, and you can fill that out. There's also a gift for you, those people that are um, newly subscribing or connecting via the, the website. So there's a little gifty there. Um, that's another way info at soulplayground.life is another way for if you want a reading or do some personal work with me lately I've been doing a lot of um, hypnotherapy with people which has been which is fab and fun for me and people make really great um, changes whether it's from autoimmune disease um, you know muscle back things phobias just releasing patterns wanting more success or drawing in love. I mean, it's just it's great to, to use that modality. So that lets you know. Also want to let you know, um, again, I'm not, I don't, some people DM'd me um, in my Instagram about in-person workshops. I don't have anything scheduled as of yet. I did something last year, shamanic workshop. We did have some awakenings peeps there, and it was really amazing. We did sacred ceremony. Uh, we did a medicine wheel, and we did some deep shamanic uh, inner plane work called wakeful dreaming. So I will I will be doing um, a workshop or tele workshop on the 22nd of this month, and those are great. This one will be connecting into the subtle energy. So we'll we'll be doing shamanic inner plane work, metaphysical uh, work, diving into the extended realms of being. The beyond the denser physical and connecting in using our intuition. So, um, Crystal Bowles, Gretna, yes, yeah, Sue, join me. This is tele workshop, so anybody out of the state, out of the country, can do it. Um, you can go to the events and workshop uh, page on Soul Playground Live, 
or it's listed on Eventbrite as well. So, yeah, we have quite a few people even from Australia, Canada. I think last time we had somebody from France. Um, sometimes people just purchase. They just get do the exchange and do it on their own, um, which is fine too, but it's also great when people join in live as well. So, um, oh, thank you for that. Is that you, Sue, thinking good sound? Thank you for letting me know. Yeah, shout out to those that are helping. Yeah, the sound does weird stuff. Apparently, the way that it's compressed, and I know some people don't like it, but I always say, you know what, go with the flow. If the content's good and you resonate, then it is what it is, because I really can't control it on this uh, this end. Yeah. So again, call in number 347-539-5122. Press 1 on your keypad. Now, many of you know, we have Robert coming in at 12.30. Um, he's, there's only a few guests that get to call, <laughs> that get to, the, the bulk of the show, um, and he's definitely one of them. Well, we're going to be diving into the great compression of 2020. Ooh, I feel that compression. How about you? And the grand mutation of 2021, beginning a new 200-year era. Yeah, there's all these cycles, whether it's decades seven-year cycle, 10-year, a lot of 10-year, 20-year, 30-year cycle between now and 2050, which are huge changes, which kicks off about 2023, um, 2023, 2024. And then, to, you know, people talk about 38-year cycle with the Pluto-Saturn conjunction, and then now, of course, Robert with 200 years. So we really are in uncharted times, Um now, I don't like to get, you know what, I do, I, whatever comes up, and I'm just hearing this, I, I do want to talk a little bit complete about the realms, but I do a lot of channeling um, over the, you know, over the years of the collective. I may start, I record them, I do them in my workshops and with my private clients and, of course, friends, just to give people the heads up. And one of them, I just got a confirmation this morning from a client and friend of mine, something that I've been saying about the vaccinations, that it's important to intervene now because at some point this is going to be mandatory for even traveling or getting a license. So my guides really give a heads up a lot of things that have the, that they've been saying the last 20, 25 years and then specifically the last 10 years have come to pass. Um, I remember my prediction of people um, trading by computer and that everyday people would be trading. It wasn't just for stockbrokers or traders or day traders, you know, people that that was their business. I, you know, and I remember clients of mine that were in that field not believing me and saying, oh, it'll never happen because there's too, the, the margin for error is too much there and regular people don't know what they're doing. You've got to train. Well, Look at all the online. I saw it. So there's a lot of things that I've seen if you are given the heads up. If you want more of that, I am open to sharing that. My my only concern is some of the things that may come through. I don't want people to get paralyzed with fear. So that's one of the reasons I, I don't say, you know, a lot unless it comes up, unless I get the message, say this. And so there may be somebody that needs to hear this. <laughs> Maybe that's why I'm I'm speaking it. To just be aware that, you know, what is being eroded. And now our best defense, our best offense, our best way to counteract anything that's happening or counterbalance it is better is by spiritual principles, is by consciousness. That's why a lot of times that's more of what I focus on. Even when I've done some workshops and I've had people, you know, tell me things like, oh, David Icke is saying this and this person and that person. I can't think of the other person. It's not that I don't see that and probably have had that information before them because a lot of these people that are putting this stuff out there, they came to this game late. I've been getting this information since I was a child <laughs> and then in my early 20s so um, and just socking it away kind of thing. But it's what do we do? The best thing to do is to focus on our consciousness, is to focus on awareness, is to focus on our own inner healing. 
Because as we do that, and I call it mitigating consciousness, just like in law, we mitigate the results. We temper it. So a lot of what happens doesn't have to go to the extreme levels, even though the predictions are there and they're happening. Um, it doesn't have to go to those extreme levels. If if there's more consciousness floating around, a higher consciousness, a more unity, unified consciousness, and that has a lot to do with wounding because the soul is not is not wounded. It's not the soul <laughs> that it's it's people not connected to their soul, so wounded that they lost their connection. They lost their way. They lost their belief. They, they don't see themselves in each other. You know, that's why we have all these, like, personality disorders and, you know, all this stuff, and it's coming up. That, that, that was a part of the old game of separation because the more you feel separate from yourself, ultimately, from something greater, God, the all that is, being a part of the whole, separated from family, friends, it's that that isolation. And, and mental health care practitioners and doctors will tell you that, experts, that people that, it's not a monetary thing why people, you know, have a better quality of life. It's not being isolated. It's not feeling alone or cut off. And especially in the Western culture, we have such a um, that, 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 that there's such a, a a trend of that, you know, that be on your own, do it on your own, you're strong on your own, be you know on your own. I don't need anybody. I do that. And so there's this cut off culture, and that, that's the reason people are able to do things that are harmful, not only to themselves because they're cut off from themselves, their own feeling, their own little inner child, their vulnerable part. And that's why people can bully people or, you know, harm other people. It's because they're not they're cut off from themselves, their spirit, their spiritual nature, the interconnectedness of everything and everyone. But they see themselves and, more importantly, feel themselves as separate, whether it's less than or superior. It doesn't matter how it manifests because if you feel you're superior, deep inside you feel less than. If you feel less than, deep inside you feel less than. So any form of cutting off, there is some kind of wounding there that says, I'm going to be left or I was left, so now I'm leaving, I'm cutting off, I'm getting back, I'm getting even, that kind of thing. So do what you can. You know, it was good for me to get that confirmation. I've been over the years been getting more confirmations, and people have been asking me, why don't you speak on this more? Well, I will if you want to and if you want to have a plan because to me the default position is what are you going to do about it? I, I remember years ago, and some of you that are listening, you may have been at this workshop, but we had a person that kept challenging me. You know, what about this? Or so and so said this, and I and what are you know? And, and this is happening in the go, and this is and I'm going. I find, I said so. What are you going to do about it? And they're like, well, what do you mean? I go, well, we can be, sit here and talk about it. We can go in the chats and complain and get in fear about it. But what are you going to do about it? And they didn't have an answer. And I said, all this time that we've been talking about this and you've been freaking out, you could have done some healing work. You could have reached out to somebody. You, to me, that's the making the difference. If that's your calling, again, you have to know, is that, your, is that your calling? Is that your lane? I just find that people get paralyzed with fear. But it is good to be aware so that you make different decisions, so that you plan ahead, so that you're not, um, you know, that you know that this is coming and you can do the best that you can. Maybe it's connecting with other people. Maybe it's having a plan. Maybe it's... Um, you know, your own deeper work so that you can hear yourself better. That's my thing. Can you hear yourself better? Can you hear your inner voice guiding you? Because at the end of the day, what's going to help you know what to do, what is right action, is, is from your intuition. It's from reading the signs. It's from understanding how at some point you begin moving out of linear time and more into divine right timing or synchronistic timing and can you read those signs can you 
understand what spirit is trying to t- tell you, which is really you. Can you understand why a door is closing or just have faith, okay, something more is coming, and how can I get the support to believe that and to go on and to make the better decisions? So that's kind of where I'm at with that. Um, so, you know, tools like meditation, you know, your spiritual practice or principles are so important right now and connecting with others, like-minded individuals, not in separation, but like-minded individuals, higher consciousness, not like-minded individuals that are constantly talking about fear and how everything is wrong. We see what's wrong. You know, people say, well, Michelle, you don't talk about Trump. Well, do I not see what's happening, not only as a psychic channel and a medium, but a therapist? <laughs> Do I not see what's going on, you know? <laughs> so, yeah, I'll talk about it a bit, but it's like, what are we going to do about it? Because ultimately, we have what we have because of a collective, and what's a collective is made of individuals. This is why I love things like, um, well, Bruce, Dr. Bruce Lipton talks about this, but, you know, Lynn McTaggart's intention experiment, Larry Dossie's experiment, what they did about the power of prayer and, and, and positive intentions, non, how we have this non-local connection, the local mind and the non-local mind, where we, that things can be felt and seen and that when we come together, when we gather with these intentions, with these thoughts, things can happen. You know, many of you know my story about with my friend lifting the car up. I think this was at 19 years old. I remember my high heels, wedgie, you know, my I don't remember what kind of heels I had on. Short skirt, my friend, we're going out, and some man, I don't know, in his 80s, got his car stuck on this, you know, like when you go in the gas station, they have that part that's the, um, the curb that's raised up high, and no one would help him. They were like, oh, well. <laughs> and Trump doesn't need another platform anyway. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> and anyway, he's not the problem. He's a symptom. And I, like I've said before, I actually have clients that have voted for him, and they're very metaphysical. Some of them are saying they made a mistake. <laughs> but whatever they thought he was going to, that type of person was going to solve, you know, this is it. No, There is no savior. What's that saying? We, we are the ones we've been waiting for. Um, anyway, with my story, yeah, we the, the garage attendants did not want to send the, the um, tow truck, even though it was like only 100 yards away. Can you believe this? people would do that? We lifted that sucker up, that car up. We lifted it up off of the curb, which was probably a, I don't know, two feet Foot and a half. Let's see. I'm I'm bad with that. Foot and a half. Whatever. You know the kind of curbs that. Or the time in Mexico that my friend we got locked out. We didn't have keys. We drove all the way there, staying in our friend's condo. They were in Europe. They forgot to leave the keys. We did not have a key that fit. We had to get the security. They said nothing can be done until Monday or Tuesday when the housekeeper comes, if she's coming. This is Friday. Where are we going to stay? Out in the middle of wherever. We open the door. Two, where two or more gathered. Freaked the security guard out. How the heck did you do that? We tried to do it the next day, but because it didn't really need to be done, the key didn't work because it was the wrong key. Because I remember telling my friend, I said, we're going to get in here. let's Let's do it. We both looked at each other. Julia. Julia Bereno Dieter, <laughs> wherever you are, if you're listening, I think you're in Europe. We did it. And then that night to celebrate, we went out to a wonderful bar restaurant, Cantina, and I did readings, tarot readings. <laughs> Freaked everybody out, did readings, told our story. People came from all over the bar to talk to us about our story. My friends, oh, my my friend is psychic. Let's uh, yes, did read my my joy doing reading. So, speaking of that, let's get to some reading. So we have a little bit of time before Robert comes on. Roberto, let's get to the first caller. Hello and welcome. You're on air. You're on Awakenings with Michelle Mache. Hello. 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 How are you? 
I'm doing great. Who's this? My name is Ashil. Let's say it again. Akashil. Ashil. Ashil. Hi, Ashil. Welcome to the program. Thank you. Yes. Do you have a question or comment? A uh, question. You know, just from career. You know. Okay. What's your question? Um, I'm just trying to see if there's changes coming up in terms of my career. And um, right now, I don't know if mm-hmm. I should say, I, I do have, you know, a way of making a living. So I'm just trying to see if things are going to improve or I'm going to take a different direction or whatever that's coming up. Well, let's see. Okay, I do feel like there is another direction. Probably you're going to be thinking about something else, maybe around June, July. I feel like where you're at is okay, but I feel like there's something more for you or something more you're going to want to do. Because I feel like where you're at, there's a limit as to what you can make or where you can go. So, yes, I do feel like there is something maybe even in communication there is something, or you may be doing something with a friend or through people that you know. It might be something kind of entrepreneurial, Ashil. Yeah, well, Does I Does that am, make sense? Yeah, you I'm are an entrepreneur. entrepreneur. Yeah. Okay. I am uh, right now. I do I have an online business. Yeah. Mm. Well, look for things to pick up then. I would say time of Gemini, you know, I, I, I don't feel may, maybe end of May, June, but June, July, I feel like there's some new door or opportunity, something that's going to come through the people that, you, that you've been connecting with, the tribe, the people that are around you. But, yeah, I do feel like you're meant to be an entrepreneurial focus, so you're doing it. Just, so just keep with it, okay? Yeah, um, you said something about it's limited, yes, in terms of, yes. you know, so far. That, that's the reason why I was thinking if I can eventually, you know, grow – you know, but uh, well, you just... will. That's what I'm saying. You will. There's going to be choices because, yeah, what you're doing, there's a limit or it's limited as to how much you can do. So there is something else coming in for you that you are going to do, but I, you don't, I don't feel you have it yet. So just give yourself some time. You know, look around, check things out, get that entrep- do some meditation, meditate, create, get that, let that entre- entrepreneurial mind start clicking because you will be doing you'll be doing something else or adding to what you're doing there's okay. an expansion like i said cuz what you're doing right now is if there's a limited it's limited and you just confirm that yeah okay thanks for calling in keep listening thank you i appreciate it you're so welcome yeah you're so welcome hello and welcome you're on awakenings hi michelle this is willa Willa, hi Willa, welcome. Yes, hi. Um, hi. Today I wanted to see if you could um, kind of look in on my son. Uh, okay. His name is Cohen, and he is on the spectrum, and okay. so our communications, you know, kind of difficult. And I just wanted to see mm-hmm. if you could get a read on him, see if he's okay, or if there's any advice you could give me on, um, you know, okay. how to work with him more. Okay. Well, what's interesting you say that because the first thing I was getting is some kind of agitation, maybe of late. And I feel like that maybe he's, I don't know, but wanting more stimuli or diversity, wanting more of, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, possibly. Okay, mm-hmm. possibly. Okay, it could be in his education or his training or whatever he's doing or rehabilitation. Um, do you read to him? Um, no, he. Um, I have tried in the past, and he just would prefer not to hear it and just shuts the books. Um, there, I don't know. There's sometimes okay. it's just like he doesn't. Mm-hmm. But sometimes does he like? There's something about. Okay, maybe I'm picking up because I I got something about being read to. Maybe it's music or if it's recorded. If it's not you, if it's rec- not nothing against mm-hmm. you. But I feel he has a connection to digital stuff, is what I'm hearing. Oh, yes, definitely. Is that true? Okay. So yes, very much. Digital, mm-hmm. digital books that he can turn on and off, digital books that he can listen to, digital music, digital sounds. Because there is, I don't know, there's something, 
he'll listen to it. Yeah. He's been having um, more challenging days at school since we came back from the winter break, um, not wanting to go, and he used to really enjoy it. And, um, you know, oh, yeah, he, but who wants he's definitely to go back getting when you bored. Have- what, well, yeah. that's what I'm saying. See, that's what I'm telling you. He's got there's something with him with the needing more stimuli, the reading. But I feel like it's digital. If you do the you know mm-hmm. computer, whatever, and he's yeah, he needs stimulation. Okay. Um, I don't blame him. You know, people always wonder if you have it nice at home. I was like this too. Why do I want to go back to school with rules and regulations when I had a nice time, <laughs> especially when I was like four and five years old, I never got that. People, oh, yeah, preschool, kindergarten, yeah, that was fine. But it's like, no, when I'm in my home, I can read, I can color when I want, I listen to my music, I play with my dog, nobody's bothering me, I take a nap when I want to. So, you know, routine is overrated. (laughs) He'll be fine. (laughs) Get him the digital stimuli of the reading and music, et cetera, because his his agitation is because his mind is bored. Okay. All right. Okay. Shall I keep us posted? It, it, yes, I appreciate uh-huh. it. Thank you, Michelle. Go ahead. Um, Did you have fine. one last I'm just question? Gonna, uh, just if it was, if there's anything in his diet or anything that could maybe help with the the autism aspects of things, or um, now that's interesting that you say something. Um, the first. I don't know why this is. The first thing, well, I was getting deep greens and spinach. Okay. Is that why? Yeah, that, he ac- does that he absolutely it's, hates vegetables. He he just, it's almost impossible yeah. to get him to eat that. But well, that's maybe definitely, you can sneak it in somehow. Him eating it. Yeah. yeah, well, then that's okay. why. Because that's, and then I was hearing, which I don't know what it is. I love always getting a message that um, I don't know what it is. And then. I had that the other day in a reading, and then we looked it up. It was a caller from Australia that I was doing a private reading for, and I saw her in, here in this place, and she, oh, and it was Bridgeport, and I'm like, I don't know where Bridgeport is, and it was I, it was this hotel or something in in um, Oregon. Anyway, I'm hearing chromium. Mm-hmm. What is chromium? Chromium oh, okay. supplement. Well, I can look into it. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Well, if I can get it in a supplement, then I could put it in a sandwich. <laughs> so I'll, I'll yeah. definitely look into that. Could, or maybe crush okay. it into, um, let's see. There it is here, chromium. Yeah, I don't know what what the heck, but that's what I was getting, the chromium. He needs minerals. Mm, he's, okay. greatly, he's greatly, um, you know, lax in minerals, and, and one of them is that – the first thing that came, broccoli so so, but especially mm-hmm. um, I don't know why that spinach. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Trace minerals. Okay. Well, I appreciate. And just yeah, yeah I you're welcome. It. And just mm-hmm. check into it. Okay. Let us know how he does. Okay. I will. All Thank right, you. Willa. Take care. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Hello and welcome to Awakenings. You're on air. Hi, Michelle. Huh? Who is this? Can, can, can you? I can hear you. This can is you hear me? Can, yeah, I can hear you. This is Dee. How are you? Hi, Dee. Oh, oh, let me just say, yeah, yeah Tammy in the chat, she, who has children, Willa, hide them in the smoothies, and it's chromium picolate. Okay, well, there we go. All right, <laughs> Dee, welcome. Thank you. Michelle, I have five children, and I swear there is just a lot going on with all of them in their different ways, three, well, four are adults. And I'm just wondering if there are any messages for what I should be doing or, you know, how to get through this rough time. Mm, Let's see. Well, the first thing I hear is focus more on you. You're the center of your world and something with your routine where you need, and this is the, this is this, um, you know, Mercury and Pisces and Neptune, the self-care. That's coming up for a lot of people right now. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, that's what I get. Because I do feel like your your plate is rather full. Yeah. And they probably, it's going to be up and down is what I hear. Okay. 
So whatever that okay. means. So it's, so there's not like a quick fix, like do this and everything goes away or everything goes back to some kind of normal. It looks like mm-hmm. there's a lot that's happening. You know, one has one thing, then that then that's done, and then another one has something else, you know, if that makes yep. sense. Yep. It, it sure does, and that's exactly does what's it? going on. So, okay. Yeah. But it's interesting so you, you said self-care because go. my mantra this week has been be kind to my mind focusing on myself. So that's just really confirmation. Oh, perfect. Yeah. Sometimes we just need to pull back. And I've been seeing a lot of people, myself included, where it's just, it's just too much. You know, I don't have five children, but I have a, a, a fur baby who's mm-hmm. senior. I call her my geriatric fur baby because it's like having a little baby, a newborn, round the clock, feeding time, geriatric needs soothing, you know, pain, med- and it's just, it's a lot. So, and I, I hate to say this, I don't think that's going to get, I don't see the easing up of it. Okay. For for okay. many people, I feel like it's going to be more of a balancing act is what I'm hearing. You know, okay. Robert, when he comes on the astrology, he may, may have some insight into that of this, because his, I mean, our title of what we're talking about, the great compression, <laughs> and then the grand mutation. I feel like we all are in the great uh compression and it used to be able where you could say oh as you get older you got kids or you got this and you got that and da 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 no i see this compression with all a lot of ages so it's a it's a wide spectrum yeah. so so yeah, yeah. d you're on the right track you got your confirmation it's the self care that's what's going to get you through it you know a little a little nose here and there no 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 or go in the bathroom whatever it is or your room and you know, I sometimes have some of my clients I work with. It's not so much the the men are not so they usually do this easier, but the moms, I'm like, get a do not disturb or mom's time. Whether you put it on the bathroom that's, door when you're trying to take a bath, that's my mom, garden time. Huh? right? <laughs> that's my garden or in time. The, I go garden, garden time or or put yeah. it in the bedroom, like when you know um, when this is there, just give me an hour, you know. Yeah, and, and whatever. Great point. Yeah. All right, D. Keep us posted, okay? Well, thank you. Thank you. You're so welcome. Blessings. You're blessings. Ah, what a confirmation. Yeah. Hello, lovey Debbie. Hello, everyone in the chat. Great to see you. Oh, chromium picolate regulates blood sugar. Oh, okay. That's interesting. All right, we have with us today, um, as I said at the top of the hour, which we're so lucky to have back, way overdue, way overdue, um, metaphysician, astrologer, and author, Robert Wilkinson. Um, He is the author of the world-renowned blog, Aquarius Papers, Um, you know, many books, uh, specifically the one on Saturn I love, um, what is it, Saturn? Greg? I don't have it in front of me, Robert, sorry. Um, but I find with Robert, the thing is, is that he distills information, very complex trends or transits that are happening, and is able to put it in words that we can all understand and hear, and then give us some kind of prescription for following it. What's going to help us navigate this through, whether it's through his blog, his books, you know, whether you're going through grief, you know, Saturn transit or understanding Saturn better or Mercury retrograde. Um, he puts that information out, um, at Saturn, you know, teacher, Saturn friend, because uh, it is both. But it's good to have someone that can just break it down for us and give us some insights of why and what's happening and how to navigate through it. Welcome back, Robert. Great to have you here. Well, hello, everybody. Glad to be back. Hey, yeah. Robert. Give yeah. us a rundown well, of your of book so you... people know. Every, most people know you, obviously, but we always have new listeners. Um, people can connect with you at AquariusPapers.com. I know some people, unless they're driving or at work, they're sitting at home, they like to go to the website and check things out. Um, but you do have great resources on your website, AquariusPapers.com, as well as books that really help people. People in the chat saying, welcome, Robert. Hello, Robert. Hello from Tammy, lovey-dovey, Angie, um, saying hello to you also. Yes. Okay. Hello, everyone. And, yes, the the book is 
Saturn spiritual master, spiritual friend. I just got some interesting feedback on it from a guy that really doesn't know much astrology, but he said that the way that I laid it out helped it make sense to him. And that just really made me feel good because I think that the issue isn't necessarily how high we are, how much we know, but it's how well can we communicate it because we are all one life together and we're all smarter and more capable and more aware together than we are separately. Mm. That was where I, yeah. I was about to say, I always listen to hear what's going on with people and kind of what you bring through. And the whole theme of the new era is ending separateness. Because remember, oh. we are spirits in the material world. We are inherently spirit and soul. These are non dual We're never separate from each other or life or love or anything ever. It's only our five senses in our mind that perceives that we are separate. Mm. And that's Mm. where we fall into some traps because if we can remember that we are one life, the other Mm. thing that you touched on, it was just so like right here. You talked about isolation. I've got a whole thing about the isolation of the Saturn-Pluto conjunction. The last Saturn-Pluto conjunction was at 28 Libra, which is about dues paying, and it's about a person in deep gloom, feels isolated from life, even though it's all around them. That's what we've been dealing with yeah. since, like, 1982-83. And it was, uh. it was like we entered into collective gloom, separateness, feeling isolated, feeling alone, in the Reagan administration, and it just kept going. And we just reset the clock in January. So this is one of the things I wanted to talk about. I mean, you talk about the cutoff culture, that that sounds to me like the Sabian symbol for 28 degrees of Libra. Mm -hmm. And that's the thing, you know, I'm going to talk about this because Jupiter and Saturn conjunct every 20 years, But every 200 years, they shift elements. And we've been in a 200-year Earth era. We've just been hypnotized by Earth and materiality and everything. Well, come 2020, you know, the December, this conjunction comes in Aquarius. And it is the first conjunction in in a nonstop period of air sign conjunctions for 200 years. So we're moving out of the dense materiality of 1800 to 2000 and into the air. That makes sense. And air is fundamentally associative. It's interactive. It is not separate. Okay, you pollute the air in Ohio and it creates acid rain up in New England. (laughs) That's the thing. I think that once we get solidly into this air era, it's going to completely change everything. You touched on facing your fear. This mm-hmm. is an extraordinary year to do that, given that Jupiter is conjunct Pluto in Capricorn. Jupiter expands. Pluto is the lord of the underworld. And it's also our divine power. It's the will power that we can invoke so that we can become agents and vehicles of spirit, whatever that means on the material level, emotional level, mental level, whether it's personal, whether it's interactive, whether it's on some global level, it's really about us becoming vehicles of spirit. And we can't really be, shall we say, uh, good vessels unless we're purified. And so this Jupiter conjunct Pluto this year is going to be great for purification. If there's any way that we need to purify ourselves, it's a great time because Saturn and Capricorn and it rules Capricorn Aquarius, these are signs that are extraordinarily self-disciplined. I mean, people think Aquarians mm. are kind of out there and eccentric. They're extraordinarily self-disciplined. They, oh, yes. yes. They usually wind up getting one great big idea, and they envision it so clearly that it becomes this beacon to, to millions, tens of millions, hundreds of millions. I mean, the great Aquarians have offered the world amazing stuff. In fact, I just did the Aquarius birthday yesterday, so if you want to go check it out, I mean, 
Thomas More and I just FDR. Well, I have to talk to a friend of, of mine because I can so agree with you because I have a really good friend that's an Aquarius. She's got a stellium and 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 her not only Venus but her Mercury, so she thinks Aquarian. So fi- so disciplined, so sometimes rigid. Like I'm going to do this and I'm going to do it now and I do it every day and I get up and I do that and boy gets things done. So. Thank you for that. That um, well, the, the but Robert, fixity which, of Aquarius is what yeah. we need. We need a consistent vision of a greatest good for the greatest number, so that all mm. can bring their gifts and their virtues and their strengths to the altar of community, where each one finds their special place in the building of the spiritual touchstone. And I use that because that is the Sabian symbol for one degree Aquarius where the, the grand mutation takes place. So we're mm. right on the threshold. This is the last year of the Earth era, and Earth dominates this year. Jupiter's in Earth, Saturn's in Earth, Uranus in Earth, Pluto in Earth, Mars is about to be in Earth, everything's yeah. about to kind of, And again, that makes for a very crowded house. Yeah. So if people feel compressed where there's just too much going on and there's just not enough room to move, well, think That's about right. it. If you had one room where you lived and it was pretty cool and all of a sudden there were five visitors in that room for the whole year, maybe two years, you would begin to feel a little bit crowded. Wherever we have Capricorn is where we're feeling crowded. In my case, it's the mm. sixth house. Sixth house is work. I'm working my brains out these days. Wherever we have Capricorn in our charts is where we really are reorganizing on a grand scale because Capricorn is cardinal earth. It's self-initiative applied in taking responsibility, getting ready, getting organized, getting the structure that becomes mm. the Aquarian building mm. job, so to speak, that right. if we don't have our Capricorn down, because Capricorn's at 12th of Aquarius, you can't do Aquarius unless you have a healthy Capricorn. If you okay, have a that's interesting. Capricorn, okay. well, think about if you're trying to build you know, some kind of a structure that's going to last for a thousand years and be an inspiration, you better pour a good foundation or it's not going to be around for a thousand years. Well, pouring the foundation, getting all the nuts and bolts and the frames and everything all assembled and structured and everything, that's the Capricorn part of it. The Aquarian Mm. part of it is when it's done and you say, wow, a million people contributed to this lovely vision that inspires all of us. Where the Mm. individual workers aren't necessarily remembered, and yet every individual worker had to be disciplined and do the structure in the right way where it wasn't going to last. So Mm. think about it this way. In this year, last year and this year we had compressions in Capricorn. 2021 and 2022 we're going to have compressions in Aquarius. And that's key because these compressions help us get organized right now. Okay, because all the planets are in a very short area of the zodiac. You know, wherever we have basically mid Capricorn through early Aries, I think we've got something like seven or six planets in that little tiny zone. I think we've mm. got seven planets. And if we add Mars, which is about to enter Capricorn, we have eight of the ten planets all squeezed wow. in this little tiny area. Yeah. So that's what's going on. All those planets rule houses in our charts. All those planetary rulers are all in one place right now, showing that we're kind of all on the same page, even if we're completely different, we're learning different things, we're applying it in different ways. We're all learning how to organize or reorganize wherever we have that. It's horrible, Robert. It's so challenging. It's so hard. In just a few when weeks, I saw the everything's great going to be within 110 I... degrees. Everything. Oh, wow. Less than a third of the, the zodiac. Everything's going to be in less God. than a third. Yeah. 
And because all these cycles have now set things into motion, yes, you were right, like the Jupiter-Saturn is a 33-year cycle, I think it is. Uh, I'll mm-hmm. get into that in a little bit because i I got to look at my notes. But, okay. yes, Saturn-Pluto is a long cycle. Jupiter-Pluto is like 12 years, 13, 14 years, something like that. We have all these interlocking cycles, Jupiter to Saturn, Jupiter to Pluto, Saturn to Pluto. And in March, Mars is going to come along and trigger all the conjunctions from January, which was a Sun, Mercury, Saturn, and Pluto, on a degree of rewards for courage and bravery in battle and discharging our duty under abnormal conditions. All of us that have done what we had to do, and shown courage in doing our diligence, we will be rewarded this year and next. That is an absolute guarantee. And not only that, that was the degree where Saturn and Pluto conjuncted, which means really there's going to be a long wave of rewards for our willingness to take responsibility and get disciplined and kind of step up and, and be that organized and responsible worker within a larger group context Because the last half of Capricorn deals with group work and group performance, whereas the first Mm. part of Aquarius deals with a contribution of a larger vision to a greater good. And so all the conjunctions coming down deal with our ability to do our group work, whatever that means. Different people have different groups. They have different teams. They have different organizations they're a part of. And I've already seen it in a lot of my clients that people are just joyously rising to the occasion, whether it's human rights work or civil rights work or Mm -hmm. election work or doubling down on their spiritual studies and their spiritual practice, trying to be of good service to their community, at least even just being open to learning how they could Mm -hmm. be of service. You want to end isolation? Go do some service. It's the quickest Mm. way not to feel isolated because you're actually doing some good in your world. So we've got all these rewards that are coming to us. And March will bring us confirmation of this in some way, as will July and November. So really celebrate the fact that we are done with that Saturn-Pluto. We're done with it. Because these are long-wave cycles lasting decades, and I'm really happy that the old one is over. Because that Mm. last one, Saturn to Gen Pluto, November 1982 at 28 Libra, it it is a degree of being gloomy, uh, of isolation, of not of a joyous solitude, but of feeling all cut off and separate from life and people. And so we have been learning to tune into the life and love that's all around us. And the last decan of Libra is all about paying dues. There's a lot of karmic implications. I'd say humanity paid a ton of karmic dues since 1982. And now that ended. New 33-year theme just began around 23 Capricorn, the rewards. And this will hold until the next conjunction between Saturn and Pluto in 2053, when it will be in mid-Pisces. So really we have a long-wave, wonderful Capricorn type of energy disciplining and structuring our world, which is a relief to me from the imbalances of Libra, because Libra Mm. is not balanced. Libra is looking for the balance. (laughs) That's why they're they're constantly shifting their judgment and shifting their sense of what has more weight, what has less weight, because they're trying to find that perfect balance. And the last Mm. decan of Libra is the Gemini decan, and Gemini has an inherent split. And so the balance is always going, is it this, is it that, is it something else? And it flips from point to point in that Gemini sector of Libra. That is also somewhat aggravated because in the old decan system, it's got a Jupiter sub-rulership. So you're dealing with Jupiter and Gemini and Libra. So it's kind of really been swinging wild, if that makes any sense, since 1982. Mm -hmm. So now we have another compression happening in March. Mars conjuncts Jupiter at the rewards degree, 23 cap. It conjuncts Pluto at 25, 
which is the same degree Jupiter is going to conjunct Pluto in April. Retrogrades back, makes another conjunction at 25 at the end of June. Then it goes direct and makes another conjunction with Pluto at 23, the rewards degree, in November. So we're looking at 23 and 25 being absolute main themes for 11 to 33 years. Wherever it is, mm. this is the area where we get to get disciplined. So, yes, you, if you want to make Saturn your friend, get my book, because it will help you deal with your Capricorn and Aquarius areas. And that is the truth. Look, Saturn's going to rule the stage during this year and next with all the preponderance of Capricorn and Aquarius because it rules both signs. So we have this long wave period. We've all begun just to barely find the seeds of movement into a transcendent security. We're figuring out we might even be able to do it somewhat comfortably as a reward for our spiritual diligence up to now. But again, remember, Jupiter conjuncts Pluto. It expands the seeds of purification and extreme conditions. So this is our chance to do radical purifications in a structured, organized, mature, and disciplined way. Then the compressions end with the Mars conjunct Saturn at 1 Aquarius on March 31st, April 1st in Europe and Asia. That 1 Aquarius Mars conjunct Saturn sets initiatives into action, which will take shape as the new 20 and 200 year eras to come because the Jupiter Saturn in December that sets that whole thing into motion is at one Aquarius the Mars Saturn conjunction at the end of March is at one Aquarius Mars initiates things Mars conjunct Saturn initiates a new Saturn discipline it's not in Capricorn it's now in Aquarius so Saturn mm. Mars conjunct Saturn at that first degree of Aquarius, jump starts the entire thing, which is going to expand and blossom after December of this year. The issue mm. is that we have early Aquarius squares Uranus and early Taurus, and so there's going to be a challenge, and especially because Saturn goes retrograde in May. So April, May, oh. and June... Saturn's going to be on to Aquarius, which is a degree of a challenge, a cosmic visitation, which is going to galvanize us to action and liberate us from old conditions. That will begin to be fulfilled by December and January when Jupiter and Saturn return to that degree. Mm. The thing is, is it's going to be square Uranus and Taurus. So yeah. what we're looking at here is a long-term budding Aquarian era that is going to run up against entrenched, fixed willfulness. Now, the thing is, okay, I think it so will lead to a great conflict later this year. Mars and Aries is going to be squaring all the Capricorn planets. And then next inauguration day, we have a Mars-Uranus conjunction and Taurus square Jupiter and Saturn and Aquarius. We've got trouble coming. Mm. However, that is just the nature of the world. Our job is to figure out what our role is, what our duty is, what our skill is, and who our group is and where do we fit in in terms of our natural part to play in that kind of group work. It, I also believe, though, that while it looks pretty grim, for example, right now, because there's just a whole lot of difficulty coming down, I right. think that it's the beginning of a rising tide, a new atmosphere, a new day dawns in April. And I think that, mm. that there's going to be a rallying of progressives, a rallying of spiritual people, a rallying of visionary people, a rallying of the group spirit, and that that mm. will, at some point, I mean, look, it's the natural evolution of this all. Natu so of, do you think, Robert, all the pushing back or pushing down is going to cause this rising of the spiritual or people wanting to come together to, for a greater good? <clears throat> well, I believe that 
there is always a greater potential available to us individually as well okay. as interpersonally and and transpersonally. So there's never a time when we don't have the ability to, as I explain in my book, step out of our old ring pass knot and just completely expand our sense of what our capabilities are and what are the boundaries of our reality and how can we expand as spiritual adults and become more skilled in applying our spiritual tools, our, our realizations into creating a better world for ourselves and for others. See, there's always a possibility, but we have to get that, that spark from spirit. We have, and that takes the receptivity of the soul to be able to allow it through into our higher mind so that we can say, oh boy, that's inspiring. I think I'm going to go do that. Oh, I see where I fit in. Oh, I see what this needs. Mm, and, and all okay. of a sudden, we catch fire because we see this needs to be done, and we know we can contribute to that. Mm. So I think that it's a situation where we just have to remember that there's this big thing called life that's going on out there regardless of how we choose to experience and respond to it. And most people are worried about their personal stuff from yesterday or the day before, and they don't think in the future. Right. Very few people actually live in the now. You know, what's going on right here, right now? And often because of the nature of the mind that likes to be bored because there's a certain glamour of boredom, you know, the mind itself decides that it doesn't, you know, it's going to kind of tune out when in fact <laughs> our consciousness needs to direct our mind towards something that tunes us in. You know, rather than tune out, we got to tune in. And it doesn't mean right. we have to do anything. Maybe we just have to be there and be receptive, which is a great thing to do with Mercury retrograde in Pisces. Absolutely fabulous. Learn to listen to the inner voice. Now, mm. remember, too, this year, the, after this big compression and then the launch of the initial pulse of the new Aquarian era in April, then comes May. And May... Uh, Venus and Saturn both go retrograde. And all of a sudden, we have in May and June, we have Venus retrograde, and then we have in June, July, we have Mercury retrograde, and we have Saturn going retrograde. And so what happens is Venus is going to retrograde May, June from 22 to 6 Gemini, and that can bring returns and renewals, whether people who come back from the past or memories of how they influenced us in the past. We can understand it in a new way. We can get insights about past interactions, uh, forging our, uh, the reactions in our subconscious mind or our unconscious so we can find a new understanding how we want to express ourselves because mm. Venus is what we like, it may be that we get to rethink why we like certain ideas and certain things and certain understanding, why we think we used to like it and we don't like it anymore, or why we really need to like some new stuff and really find a whole new way of finding the knowledge we need. And that's going to come to us by late June. Is we're all going to be searching for knowledge which can ensure us either material well-being or some form of effectiveness. So I think mm. use May through July to balance your body and feelings and mind. You know, it's about mm -hmm. really finding a healthy balance between work and play, body, feelings, mind, and get ready to find new information. Now, Mars is going to start slowing in August, and in late August it's going to go retrograde in September. It stays very slow until December. Expect a lot of stuff to slow down. Use delays wisely. It's like a whole different way of doing things. Some things have to be put on the shelf until we pick them back mm -hmm. up. So don't get frustrated in September, October, November. But the problem is the volatility. Because August through October, Mars is square, Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto. And then it retrogrades. Whoa, that's a squaring punch. Squaring Jupiter, Saturn, and Pluto. 
And so what we want to do is think back on the first few days of February, the first five days of March, the middle of April, and, and April 23rd through 27th, because there are squares going on from Aries to Capricorn. It's going to show us very clearly what's going to dominate the whole end of the year. So if something creates agitation or challenge, it's directly related to what we need to do later on to play our part in the bigger picture. So Mm. mid-July, August through September, balance things out, adjust perspectives, because during that time, planets transiting through cancer will oppose the Capricorn, and it'll really help us use Libra correctly. So it's what we can do is because the really hard, hard squares are coming from Aries to Capricorn, we need to learn how to practice good cancer and good Libra energy because that's what we need to integrate and be productive during those hard-edged squares. Now, you remember, transit to transit, you can't take it personally because it's just what's going on. There's, there's going to be a lot of battle <laughs> going on later this year, and we're going to see the beginnings mm. of it, as I say, in April, especially like that early April with Mars conjunct Saturn and then Mars squares Uranus. And that's going to give Ugh. us the front-end look of how we're, what we're going to have to deal with. So I believe that we can use um, the Libra oppositions in September, October, November to mobilize in our enlightened self-interest. So the early squares from Aries to Capricorn shows us to use Cancer and Libra in summer and autumn to turn the friction into integrative power. Mm-hmm. And I would say the basic lesson to remember for the whole year is if you can't make it better, don't make it worse. Mm. And that means good you advice. have to think about what you're doing or not doing and whether you should or shouldn't act or say whatever. Because some mm-hmm. people think, well, what can I do, what can I do, what can I do? Well, sometimes you can't do anything except just be quiet, listen, yeah. be patient, get a plan, wait it out. You know, premature moves sometimes bring disaster. And, you know, yeah. in our world, we all want instant results. And people are going, well, why don't you do it? Why don't you do it? Why? Again, it seems back to what are you going to do about it is only one part of the equation. Because, yeah, you've got to have a plan. But at the same time, you also have to have a clear vision and a good time to start. Yeah, because the initiation to, of it, right? Yeah, don't launch your boat when a storm's blowing in. <laughs> You'll wind up right. back on the beach. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. it's like I really, really wanted to plant, but I knew I had to, to wait. And sure enough, we had a freeze come in. And if I had planted, everything would have been wiped out. So there was just a part of me that knew it's still a little bit early. I, I, I'm mm-hmm. assembling all the plants and the seeds and everything, but I, it's just not quite time yet. And so right. that's another quality that we human beings have to do is to – rein in our impatience and get a plan. So Mercury is about to go retrograde. Each year there's a theme because 14 Sag was the theme of 2018. It went direct in late 17 and then it went retrograde in late 18, both of 14 Sag. So 2018 was about the power of our spiritual ancestry, our ancestral wisdom, our genetic wisdom. And mm. then December 18th, it went direct to 28 Scorpio. And in late last year, it went retrograde on the same degree. And so the theme of 2019, we all got to get connected with the magnetic force of the earth and the solar system. How connected are we to ourselves and others internally and externally? That's what we were learning to do is just turn away from the outer show and go inward in 2019 and get connected. Now 2020, see, because in late 2019, Mercury went direct at 12 Scorpio, the same degree it's going to go retrograde this October. And so at this time, we're learning how to interact with others and ourselves at a higher and more refined spiritual approach. 
So it's like about interactive magnetism. It's like being less casual in our approach to some people as well as some issues about how we're going to express ourselves in our world. So anyway, we're all meeting each other at a different level. Now, just in a few days, it's going to go retrograde at 13 Pisces. I've already got two or three articles up about it on the Aquarius papers. I've got another extraordinarily good one coming out tomorrow and another one on how it will affect all signs and birthdays on Friday. I also have uh, my usual Valentine's Day post. So if you're ever wondered about the difference between courtship and seduction in terms of healthy relationships, have Ooh. fun with the articles posting over the next two days. Now, this Mercury retrograde in Pisces, we're going to have to have courage to focus spiritual will. And it's going to go direct in early March at 29 Aquarius, which is graduation into a new realm of being, some sort of metamorphosis which will change the way we live our lives. And Mars is going to activate it in the first half of May. So we all graduate into a new realm of being wherever we have late Aquarius in our charts. And it also, be wherever we have Gemini and Virgo, and planets in Gemini and Virgo, because Mercury rules those signs, we also, in those areas and in those departments, planetary departments of labor, we will all graduate into a new realm of being and go through a total metamorphosis. So this is a heavy, heavy period. We're like right preparing to jump into a whole new realm of being in April and the first half of May. Okay, mm. 2020 does set up the conflicts of 2021, and I've tried to touch okay. on that because of the, the squares between Aries and Capricorn and then Aquarius and Taurus. During this time, we also have two main things going on, revolutionary configurations that are triggered all the time. And they work on subtle, powerful, far-reaching levels. And one is what I term the grand irrationality. And we're now in the second phase of that. Uh, it's a real hard-edged fork in the road for the entire world right now, has been for the last couple of years, will be for the next couple of years. We also have what I've termed the rhombus diamond, which is the long-term Uranus semi-square Neptune. Complacency is not in the collective option box right now. There is no way for anybody nope. to be complacent. Oh, interesting. But it's interesting because the ego tunes out whenever yeah. it gets hit with too many choices or That's too right. many dilemmas. It just wants to go off and have ice cream. It doesn't really want to have to weigh and judge through critical thinking skills, you know, whether this is truth or whether this is complete nonsense and whether or not you're being gaslighted or not. Ego would just seem to say, ah, who cares? And yet we can't. We have to be aware of gaslighting. We have to be aware of what's going on or else we are unaware. And if the point of being conscious is to be conscious, that means more awareness, not less awareness. So all of us that are seeking truth, we ha I've told you all this before, and it holds as true now as it did years ago, and that's a, because we're humans, we have to learn to feel all that there is to feel so that we can understand how to express appropriate feelings and not inappropriate feelings. You know, how we, we have to learn to face fear so that we're not paralyzed when we find ourselves in the presence of fear. We have to learn how to break the link between pain and suffering. So the minute that we're with somebody else who is in pain and suffering, we don't fall into that same trap. We have to be very clear about, okay, we understand that certain things are generic to the human condition. This is what this Mercury in Pisces is going to be good for. It's going to help us understand a lot about collective consciousness you know, again, remember, with the grand irrationality going, if things don't make sense, they don't have to. Okay, mm -hmm. all that we have to do is keep our cool and be mindful in the midst of everything being really crazy and irrational. So at this point, we're still organizing, reorganizing, and structuring. 
But there is that conflict that had Saturn's headed for its square to Uranus. And again, we're going to briefly experience a taste of it in early April when Mars conjuncts Saturn and then squares Uranus at 6 Taurus a few days later. And that is a crucial point in cosmic time. It initiates the pulses of the Aquarian grand mutation, but at the same time it also sets up the conflict between right. the Aquarian future and the Taurus inertia. And then we have this other compression coming in January, next January, most focused uh, second, third, and fourth weeks. We got Mercury square Mars, conjunct Saturn and Jupiter, squares Uranus, then Mars squares Saturn on the 12th. That's going to be wow. going for two weeks. Uranus is going stationary direct. That sea changes for the world. Then there's Inauguration Day. Mars conjunct Uranus at 7 Taurus, both square Jupiter and Saturn at 8 and 4 Aquarius, respectively. And then that night and the next day, the moon conjuncts Mars and Uranus, which all exactly square Jupiter at 8 Aquarius. That's a lot of friction. Tons yeah. of friction. And interestingly, see Pluto is at 25 Capricorn, the exact degree of two of the Jupiter conjunctions going on this year. So we're, we're getting to understand what we can expect. Whatever expands or launches in early April and the end of June, both those things play a major part in the changes of January 2021. And it's probably going to seem like you know, very anarchic because Mars is activating two kinds of conflict. You know, the cardinal mm. sign conflict is August <clears throat> to December. Then the fixed sign happens in April, sets the stage for January of 2021. And I would say that's just a conflict between regressives and progressives. And mm, see, I okay. think that, yeah. And I, again, we, everything is set up by the Uranian station of last summer, which was about the awakening to a new quality of being, rendering the old patterns obsolete. That was awakened. That is front and center this year and next, thanks to Uranus, thanks to the Mars conjunct Uranus next January. See, I think we're going to see that the forces of regression, and, you know, you can call it materiality, you can call it separateness, you can call it the current, you know, soul-crushing systems that do not empower individuals to a greater good. They just want to exploit people, keep us down, right. keep us buying into the illusion, keep us angry, keep us frustrated, keep us feeling like we don't know, we don't know, we don't know, we don't know. When in fact we do, we just we can't use the mind. We have to use the heart, and we have to stop trying to reference all the stuff that's ever changing and really reference the eternals. That's why we have a spiritual practice, <laughs> so that we have a steady, steady beam. You know, our spiritual mm -hmm. practice tunes us in on the universe and the Great Mother, and not just our own Atma Buddhi Manas, our higher triad, our soul and spirit, but it tunes us into the, the big tone of all of existence, the great ohm, the great F major, the great life tone that pervades our system. And when we tune into that, a lot of our fear and separateness just falls away. And that will be the characteristic of the new age because there's no way to be afraid of anything. We just have to do what we have to do. And fear is both a useless response and a dangerous disease. It, it has absolutely no usefulness in terms of who we are, what we are here to be and do. And we are here to mm -hmm. do our being, and each one of us is a unique thing. Nobody else can determine our dharma for us. I try to make that clear in the book. We are all being led to a great Tao. And everything is sort of a manifestation of it, but none of it is the whole thing. So we are the proverbial seven or eight or nine blind people, you know, trying to describe the elephant, but we're like, you know, a million of us trying to describe an elephant that can't be described. So I believe that what we can do is generate a tremendous amount of heart strength and focused intensity of soul force. And it begins now with this Mercury retrograde and we're going to be able to use it uh, during the times of, of the summer when we need Leo 
and then in autumn when we need Scorpio, that's when we're really going to be able to be the light and the power and the wisdom and the understanding of those sign energies. So to sum it up, this year is about reaping rewards as a new quality of life opens up. We're preparing for a new era initiated in April. It'll spring to life in 2021. Okay, and it's, that's it. It's a whole new era. So it's done. We're now done with 200-year Earth material focus. We're beginning a period of more intellectual, interactive, vision of a greater good, vision of a greater community, cooperation, synthesis. Again, Aquarius is communicative and interactive. And so I think we're going to just see new Aquarian social forms. I think mm, we're going to see a, a much more progressive you think it'll start now? era. Mm-hmm. I, I think it begins in, in April. I mean, okay, yes, right I now, see. because the sun's in Aquarius, we're getting the light of Aquarian ideals. But, again, we get this every year because already Venus is in Aries and Mercury's in Pisces, and now Mercury's going to retrograde. I think, again, part of this, by early March, Mercury moves forward, the guide of souls on the degree of the butterfly emerging from a chrysalis, the graduation into a new realm of being. We will all radically transform our lives in some way, and it's just going to open up doors for us. It's a metamorphosis wherever we have late Aquarius and Gemini and Virgo. So that's, mm. it's a good thing. I mean, and then that gets initiated in a big way uh, during the time the, the future pulse gets initiated in April. We get the graduation vision or understanding or signs and signals in March. We begin the new Aquarian pulse in April, and then Mars goes over the graduation degree in early May, propelling us in that direction. So it mm. kind of – we get the vision – we get the pulse, and then we get the quickening. The vision in early March, or, yeah, early March, we get the beginning of the pulse in April and the quickening in early May. Then we have Venus retrograde, so we have Venus reflections and reviews and stuff to do. And then we have Mercury reflections and reviews, late June and early July. And then by August, Mars begins to slow down. And so I would really say just expect that there's going to be just an intense amount of friction. And as spiritual beings, I mean, there's sort of healthy anger and unhealthy anger. And beware of toxic people. You know, just beware of toxic people. Beware of argumentative people. Be, Be aware that some people can never be satisfied. And all that you can do is be reasonable and diplomatic and firm and agreeable, and if possible, slip out the back. <laughs> Go your own way. <laughs> Do not get involved in the generic agitation unless your efforts can be focused for maximum good. doesn't do any good to get into shouting matches with people. Nobody was ever convinced in a shouting match. But if you can apply your energies directly, intensely, especially in Aries in short bursts, then you will find your your quick, natural way to express your song in the cosmic choir. Because we're mm. what Uranus awakened us to in twenty seventeen and twenty eighteen and twenty nineteen about singing our song in the cosmic choir, well that's the exact degree Mars goes retrograde in September. So we'll get to see whether we're singing our song or someone else's song, and maybe we have other songs we need to sing, and maybe one choir has to be put on hold while we go and sing our song in another choir. It it could take any number of possible manifestations. So I do believe Mm. that we're really at at the front edge of the launch of a new wave of Aquarian energies, is going to lead us to understand how to make greater contributions through how we manage energy. I think we're all going to really be more focused as a collective on being more perfectly aligned with an ideal. And, of course, that means breaking free of obsolete controls and structures. The good news is that that's naturally what progressives need to do. The bad news is if you think about that in the context of the regressives, (laughs) 
well, they want things more perfectly aligned with their ideal. Yeah. They want to yeah. break free of any kind of control on their retrograde vision and retrograde structures. They want to make a greater contribution through managing the energies, meaning stifling everybody that doesn't agree with them. So as you could see, same energy can be used for regression as it can that's for right. progression. And that's where each of us has to be very, very clear that, again, it's not really about us. It's about how can we make our world a better place? How can we contribute to a greater good? So that if nothing else, when we leave this earth, it's a little bit better than when we found it. So it sounds like between now and like March, there's a lot of prep with this retrograde, you know, that there's for these openings that you're seeing. Well, I mean, again, you could, it's, there's whole books written about Mercury retrograde. So, yeah. Yeah, it's always a review, a reflection, a rehearsal. It's about gathering the information. Preparation. It's about practicing mm-hmm. it before you do it for real. So to mm-hmm. some extent, I guess I could say we already got the signs and signals and understanding that we graduated into our new realm back at the beginning of February, the first few days when Mercury was at 28, 29, and 30 Aquarius. Mm-hmm. And again, this is all leading us, because the 29 Aquarius is the graduation, 30 Aquarius is the particle of light within the field of light. Mm-hmm. And that's really who we are. We are all particles of light within great waves of light in a vast sea of light. And that's what sentience is. That's what stars are. That's what humans are. That's what planets are. We are all composed of light substance. And we are all radiant, shall we say, loving, wise intelligences that have no limit. Because like the fool in the tarot, that's Uranus. We are forever free to keep exploring and keep learning and keep searching. Even when we become perfect Jeevan Mudgas and we no longer have to even be reborn on Earth. Some of us are going to be on Earth service. Some of us are going to go to the star Sirius. Some of us are going to work with the solar pitris and the solar angels to, to disperse solar force throughout solar systems and galaxies and cosmos. Some of us are going to go on to become suns in our own solar Mm. system. That's what Mm -hmm. I mean. There's no end to our growth, to our evolution. And we get all hung up down here because we get frustrated. We want to know, but yet we also want to hold on. You know, we want to be comfortable, and yet we want to get into uncomfortable zones if we ever want to learn anything more than we're comfortably comfortable with. So, right. you know, I think that this is where part of the issue is the inertia of matter, including the inertia of our bodies, the inertia of our feelings, and the inertia of our thoughts. And that, that these take on inertia because of the nature of being a human being. You know, we learn what we learn. We like what we like. We want to do what we want to do. We get comfortable yeah. with certain ideas and relationships and ways of relating, and we don't really want to step outside them because people might wonder if we went crazy or what's wrong with us or, you know, maybe we just don't feel that way anymore, and then we have to explain to people, and, of course, they never felt that way, so how could we explain to them our experience that they've never had? And so we get hung up there. And really Mm. what it's about, I think, is sometimes we can communicate more in the silences than in the words. That's the usefulness of Pisces. Sometimes we have to speak a unifying vision. I was just asked to do that for an article for a magazine that seems like there's a lot of fragmentation in the astrological world. And I was asked to create an article that would be unifying. Oh, nice. that me to thinking, you know, how would I possibly, because you can't tell somebody to be unified, <laughs> not unifying. Right, so how, right. How can I, and so that means I have to be receptive to the mm-hmm. imagery that will unify hearts, that will help give a greater vision for separated minds and separated ideas. And so 
uh, you know, that's just in my own life. Everybody's got their own ticket. And so, Mm -hmm. for example, this Mercury retrograde is an old sword in a museum, and it's all about allowing our little will to become agents for a higher spiritual will. So we're all here to try to learn how to be agents of a higher spiritual will. Because it's retrograde, there may be time lags. It may come in roundabout ways. It may even be that we can remember. When we were used as an agent for a spiritual will in the past, the retrograde, and then by remembering how we were agents of a spiritual will, that will lead us to the transfiguration in early March. See, the retrograde doesn't have to operate directly. It doesn't, it's not a linear thing. It might be from, right. you know, we might have flashes of past life experience of how we, we just completely stepped out of our own way. Again, because Pisces, the, the power of Pisces is in uh, forgiveness and compassion. Sometimes it, you have to understand that it's more compassion to focus the will and cut the cord. You know, let it drift down the time stream. Forgive it and let it go. You know, do not mm-hmm. hold on to that ghost. So I think, and I put this in my articles on the Aquarius paper site about this, is it's going to be good for revisiting old ghosts and letting go. It's going to be good for finding ways of programming ourselves to step out of our way and be the agents for a higher spiritual power. Mm, oh, I love that. There's a lot of letting go for this higher vision and version of us, it sounds like, this more expanded or more expanded in consciousness. It sounds like, too, Robert, you're saying a big part is this being aware to not tune out, to not go into the lower level of the ego and tune out. Well, yes, but how do we stay no aware? Well, Pisces zones out. You know, it spaces out. It drifts. It daydreams unless it's disciplined because Mercury rules Virgo and Pisces, it's in its exile. You know, it's in the sign opposite, its own nature. Yeah. It's great for receptive mind. It's great for the empathic mind, and it's great for tuning in on the collective. It's great for cultivating a practical intuition. But again, that means you've got to have Capricorn somewhere in there <laughs> to make right. it practical. It goes, you, yeah, you can't just, I mean, you know, <laughs> being aware is not a soft discipline. It's mm. not. Sometimes we breathe in and sometimes we let go. But it's not a soft discipline becoming more aware because at every turn it challenges our comfortable assumptions. It's a little bit like mm-hmm. being a parent, you know. <laughs> the, yeah. the kid will definitely challenge you at every turn and every hypocrisy, every inconsistency, you will be busted on it. And parents right. know that. You know, that's why you have to be remarkably disciplined and consistent when it comes to a plan of boundaries and structures and duties and disciplines. Well, just consider the ego, your your child that busts you at every turn and unless you've got a good discipline your ego is just going to run circles around your consciousness mm-hmm. because it wants to go out for ice cream when it's supposed to be, you know, eating its broccoli. <laughs> so. Yeah. It's it's having a lovely compassion for that part of us, you know. And how do we... This is the natural time <clears throat> right. of the year of harvesting because all the planets are, you know, they're going through Aquarius and Pisces and Venus is giving a taste of what is to come. Again, in, oh, next week, Venus is going to be square in Jupiter and then square in Saturn. Pay attention because it's not about us. It's about our response to the outer mm-hmm. condition. And if the outer condition's agitated, we don't need to be agitated. If the outer right. condition is everybody going ain't it awful, ain't it awful, we don't need to join in the the chorus. We mm-hmm. have to see how if it if it's a square from Aries to Capricorn, then we need Libra and Cancer. How do we balance it? What's fair? What is the ideal? How can we nurture the ideal? What needs protection? You know, where have we conformed to our primal innocence? Where have we separated from our primal innocence? Because if we can target where the innocence has been lost, then we're in a position to understand the core of the issue and be real, almost like childlike in offering it to the world 
in very simple terms. And so I think mm-hmm. that this is really going to be about stepping back from sort of ignorant self-interest or, or being reflexive about things and really preparing, anticipating, using mm-hmm. foresight to understand what's coming and see the signs and signals and prepare accordingly. And again, you're right. Do not go into fear. Just think in the future, adapt, you know, do your skills, and get ready to play your part in a greater role in a greater building work, a greater contribution. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Robert. This has been amazing. So much uh, wisdom and um, so many insights. So appreciate you being on Awakenings. Um, you know, come back soon or next time. <laughs> okay. Well, sure. Love having you on. I love okay. you guys. Love to love to you too. Much peace. Okay. Bye. Bye. Okay, everyone. That was Robert Wilkinson, metaphysician, astrologer. Um, you can find out more information by going to his amazing blog, Awaken, um, AquariusPapers.com. That's AquariusPapers.com. And a couple of his books that are really great to get, um, Spiritual Master, Spiritual Friend, and also A New Look at Mer- Mercury Retrograde. That's A New Look at Mercury Retrograde and Sa- Spiritual Saturn, Spiritual Master, Spiritual Friend course available on Amazon as well um, I think it's always good to get the 411 he's helps us so much navigate so again a lot of insights um, wisdom but also you know just information um, also on the transits what to expect what's happening and also how to navigate through it is also on AquariusPapers.com all right, everyone. Oh, it's always so great to connect with all of you. Um, if you want more information on me, you can go to soulplayground.life. Um, connect with me on my YouTube channel, Soul Insights with Michelle Mache. Subscribe, share, comment. Let me know how you're doing on your soul path. Connect on the Awakenings group page as well. We've got a great community group page. Um, and then Awakenings with Michelle Mache and Instagram, Twitter. Let's just keep it going, but also just let me know how you're doing. Share your own insights of what's happening. Share what what are your projects that you're working on, especially in the Awakenings group, especially if you have, you know, wonderful quotes and in, 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 in your posts, whether it's art or music, that is so much about the soul is our creative expression. So when we share this with others and inspire each other, We help each other along the path. All right, loveys, till next time, continue to shine your light, share your insights, and, of course, keep awake. Awakenings broadcast every Wednesday, 12 p.m. Pacific Time. Archive shows available on iTunes. For continued awakened conversations and insights, join the Awakenings group on Facebook. And check out Michelle's blog at soulplayground.com. And keep awake. Awakenings broadcast.